Jordan's bank, the Baptist's cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Good morning or whatever time of day it is that you're able to view this. We are gathering today purely by live stream because of the impending weather. And as I greet you and welcome you as we are here today for you uh, who are at home, we thank God for the ability to do and have services and communicate and remain as a community even when we cannot physically be present. I think this serves to make us feel a little more solidarity with those who join us normally who are homebound or maybe who are at a distance or for whatever reason can't join us physically in church. So now we are all spiritually coming together as a community, as a body of Christ, but we do so uh, through the media we have. And so therefore it's great to be together. All are welcome as we say at our church and we're not the only ones to say that, but all must be welcome. And so as we come together, it is great for us, even with the predicted bad weather, to be able to keep holy the Sabbath, to fulfill our obligation in love, to gather as a family, to worship our God, to praise God, to receive his blessings, and then in turn share them with each other. I guess at this time, it is a time for caution because of the weather and other things, but most likely we're really just doing the virtual thing today because of the weather. And it's a time for safety. There is a time and the time when it comes, we must regather and get as best we can together here at church. And again, with our sisters and brothers who join us virtually. There's a time for everything. And we've heard that in scripture. So when it's safe to travel again, we will gather. And it's important that we do so either physically here, and again, with our sisters and brothers who join us normally uh, through the, uh, the live streaming. We're gonna begin and, and focus in this year in many different ways. And we're going to look at the invitation of God and the meaning of the message of God of light. Today, we're gonna hear some aspects of that. And I have the candles in the back, if you could kind of see the contrast with the, uh, with the, uh, the internet and the, the, the computer. Light is a very important image, and I think it's a very significant image for us to now really embrace. So by way of introduction, I thank you for, for listening to that. It's very important. But let us begin our, our service and our prayer, as we always do. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior who is with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen.
Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the, <clears throat> the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Seba, in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offering, your, excuse me, your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons and daughters from afar, and my, excuse me, my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord gives his people the blessings of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. 
And the Holy Spirit des descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven came, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we hear from the gospel, and again, we remember and remind ourselves we're at the beginning of the gospel of Luke, people are filled with expectation. They're looking for something. I think a wonderful question for us today might be, what do we expect from God and ourselves in faith? What do we expect? How is it that we are living our faith and, and what is it that we're looking for? How reasonable is that? How much is that based in what God has called us to and what he has promised us? So what is the expectation? What do we look for from the church and from ourselves? And I think that really is the good way to start as we begin our new year, as we look to see how it is that we can grow in our faith and, and live better lives. And it says also that they're questioning in their hearts. Questioning has always been something that's been quite interesting in faith because a lot of times people are told that they shouldn't question. You just have to believe. And there are times where that's absolutely true because we have to believe and we have to live in faith. But oftentimes there really are opportunities for us to question and we should expect answers. And if the person in front of us can't give us those answers, we need to find them. Uh, not everybody knows everything, but in faith, we need to question. Questioning is the way in which we learn and we grow and we know God in a better and more full way. And we do understand ourselves. If we stop questioning, we really stop growing. I remember at times in school, we were told, don't question, just, just, just accept this, just learn this. I mean, if we were buying a car, well, don't ask questions about it. You don't need to know that. What's under the hood? Who cares? We do not check our brain at the door. God gave us that great gift. And while we must rely on faith, most certainly and absolutely, we need to understand what we can and seek and try to find the answers for those questions that have answers in our faith. And there are many. So this brings them to John the Baptist. They know they needed something more and something different. These people who come to him and they say, are you the Messiah? They're, they're struggling with this. Who is this Messiah? And are you this person? Because you're a great person. And John the Baptist certainly was filled with the spirit and was a wonderful prophet. And really the prophet of prophets, if you will, aside, of course, from Jesus. But they know they needed the change because things in their organized religion and their faith was they, they weren't working. There was a lot of difficulty. And while the word of God is eternal, the way that word of God is lived as with society grows and it changes and it evolves, not God's word, but our understanding and our participation as each generation embraces the word of God and seeks to live it. Yet it's the same one God who is eternal and changeless, society changes, people change. And that's something I think that a lot of our institutional churches and including ours is struggling with. We kind of want to have things the way they used to be and it doesn't work because people change and the way things happen and the way things are. You know, if you think about it, a lot of times we like to hold on to these things and it's, it's, almost hypocritical because we hold on to those things in faith. But yet, you know, how many of us, when it comes to technology, you know, we have our smartphones, you know, we're not driving around cars that you have to crank to start up. You know, we're, we're very quick to get on an airplane or we're, we're very quick to have a lot of the conveniences that have come with the evolution of technology and the growth of humanity, uh, certainly in healthcare. You know, how many of us are going to line up for leeches? 
you know, or some kind of crazy little thing that's, that's probably toxic, some potion or, or powder or whatever, because we expect as we grow and learn, again, the reality of humanity does not change, but our understanding of it does, and we benefit from that. That should be no different with our faith. We still gather as the one people of God, but do we forget our children? And our sisters and brothers who are, are, you know, culturally or otherwise, you know, different than we are. And different does not mean better or worse. It simply means different. Do we forget them in our selfishness and wanting things to remain the same? And these people are questioning. And they're looking for something that is, that is really taking them to a better place. And that is exactly the call we hear today. And that's all part of the image of light. It's all part of the image of that great expectation. It's a joyful thing. It's a happy thing. Now, some of them, it is true, if we study our history, did not move on. They believed in John the Baptist. And when Jesus came, they got stuck there. And that all died out. Because people realized that Jesus was the Messiah. And John himself said that. And John said, don't follow me, follow him. But they, that's the way things always have been. I'm going to follow you, John. You're a great guy. And John was, but Jesus was greater. We need to move on and find out how we can serve the church. And that does not mean the building. It means all of our sisters and brothers, how we can serve them better today. Not the way things were 20 or 30 or 50 years ago and not even the way they were two, three years ago, because we've seen that decline in our churches. And it's not because of the ineffectivity or the irrelevance of the word of God. It's lasted 2000 years. It's because of the way we celebrate and live community. And so we're going to get some insight into that in this gospel today. These people were looking for the true Messiah. Who was this true Messiah? And we need to see and search to see who the real Jesus is. We have all these crazy, and I watch them all the time with great interest, and, and sometimes just makes you scratch your head, these pseudo-history shows on TV that speculate all kinds of odd things, and they take obscure things from history, and they, they make them sound like this is the way everybody believed, and it was not. So we look to where? We look to scripture. We look to hear the word of God that speaks to us and the word of God that is in our hearts and that we share with our sisters and brothers and that is shared with us through our services and in so many different ways. The real Jesus. Knowing Jesus and having that personal relationship with him in our hearts but the real Jesus who comes to us and we hear through the word of God. Today, we see Jesus at this baptism of many people, but also particularly himself. He's baptized and he was praying. Luke is going to emphasize prayer and rightly so. I mean, the other ones do, but Luke really takes time to mention this many times in his, his uh, gospel. We need to pray. We need to have that communication with God. And praying just doesn't mean rattling something off, and then that's it. But it means listening, listening to the word of God and being open to what God has to say to us. So Jesus is praying, and it says that the Holy Spirit, and it uses a very particular word, the Holy Spirit comes down and it comes to Jesus, and I will use the words directly from here, in bodily form. Now, it's indescribable because they say it's like a dove, but there is something very tangible, something very real, and something very powerful about this Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we kind of think, whether you do the Holy Ghost thing and stuff like that, you think of something like Casper and you can't touch it. Maybe some people can't see it. That's not it. The Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus in bodily form. It is real. How many of us live our faith lives knowing and believing and sharing in that reality of the Holy Spirit coming to us in a substantive way, not just, oh, I feel a little happy today, 
or I might just pray. Those are inspirations to be sure. But God helps us through his Holy Spirit in so many ways to bring joy into our lives, to give us guidance, to, to give us strength, to give direction and understanding. And there's just so many different gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we'll save some of those for Pentecost. But it is a real thing. Why does Luke put that bodily thing in there? Because too many people were sitting around thinking, well, this is just some kind of like, a, you know, it just isn't real. But it is. And it's very real. We have all received the Holy Spirit. And that really is something we need to reflect on. We are never left alone without the love of God, without God's guidance. And that's within us. But it's also the reason, again, why we come together as a church family. Then we see the disciples in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter and John, going out to a community. And they go out and they lay hands on these people. And that's not just symbolic in some sense of the conferral of the Holy Spirit, but it is also a manifestation of the fact that we as Christians are not pew sitters and attendees at some kind of spectacle. It is a faith of participation and action. And we need to lay hands on people. Now, in society today, that really can have some bad connotations. <laughs> I'll put my hands on you. You know, it sounds almost confrontational. But what it means is to become actually involved and not just sit back and say, I want to be fed. And this is just kind of, you know, take out the pews and put in a barca lounger or something like that or whatever, some kind of recliner. That's not our faith. We are called and we are sent to other people to minister to them, to share with them, to live with them, to love them, and then in turn to benefit too from what a mutual community does. It supports each other. And that is something we must approach positively and not critically, as so many people do sometimes. But they lay hands on them. They weren't just in attendance. I was there. They were more than there. They were there and they, they were a part of ministering God's presence. The conferral of God, the Holy Spirit itself is conferred through this laying on of hands. Now, God can do things without us, certainly. But God has chosen for us as disciples, as children, as sisters and brothers to be ministers of his very presence, which means we have to be involved. What about this Holy Spirit and fire? And that's kind of where this is bringing us full circle from my announcement at the beginning of church and the, the whole image of, of, of light. There would be people who would take this opportunity. If you don't believe you're going to burn in the unquenchable fire, fear, and, and, and all kinds of horribly negative and certainly not godly things. The Holy Spirit comes... And the Holy Spirit comes with power and with fire. And fire is something that purifies. And this is these, these are from scriptural. These are scriptural understandings of this. Refining and purifying. It sheds light. And it brings warmth. Those very things that we need from God as the Holy Spirit comes to us to live a good life. A life of faith. A life of connectedness with God and with each other. So we do need to be purified. We need to be made better. And it's not an overwhelming preoccupation with sin. It's just let's deal with the things that are less than perfect and then move on to the things that God invites us to. And that's the sharing of his love with each other. So let's how about that unquenchable fire. That's, that's kind of really a good one. You know, because people could dig their claws into that, and that's really meaty. Unquenchable fire, and you should be quaking in your pews. No. It means that once we start to deal with things in our lives that are problems, they can be solved, and they could be removed from our lives permanently. So we throw that chaff, the stuff that is useless, the stuff that is a burden, the stuff that we don't want, we throw that into that unquenchable fire, great symbol, where it is consumed and it's removed. And we move on with our lives and we leave that garbage and it's gone and it's gone forever. It's not where God throws people because he's displeased. 
And, you, you know, the whole Dante Inferno image of, of writhing in pain and, 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 you know, you go there, you go there at your own risk, because that's not what's said in scripture. We can be freed of bad things forever. Do you believe that? Hopefully so, because that's what God says. And that's what God's inviting us to. The last kind of image is interesting, that winnowing fork. I have no idea what they look like. I've seen some things, maybe they are, maybe they're not. But basically what that is, is the truth of God. And in order for all of this to be true and make sense and to work, we have to really deal with what God really says and who God really is, as well as who we are. And what is that winnowing fork? What is the truth of God? And as we look at Jesus Christ, and we will see this as we go through his life, as we go through this year, the truth of God is love. The truth of God is forgiveness. The truth of God is mercy. The truth of God is acceptance. The truth of God is service. And the truth of God is selflessness. We see that all in Jesus Christ. And so that's the light into which we walk. That's the enlightened way to live. That brings the warmth of God's love into our lives most powerfully and then enables us to share that with each other and to live that way as a community. The separation of the wheat and the chaff, it's done already. It's done. We know what's right and what's wrong, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, as opposed to stuck in something and saying something that you know, makes us feel better and we kind of know is a lie. It's not the truth. We know what is right and wrong. But do we have the faith to admit it to ourselves and to others? And the Holy Spirit is what gives us that ability. And imperfect as we are, and that's not a problem. We need to live this way. So as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, as we think of the coming of the Spirit in bodily form in a real and a tangible way into our lives, in a powerful way, to bring us into a life that is far better than one that we could, through our selfishness, even believe or think about. It's a great invitation. And that's part of the light that God shines into our lives today and will continue to do so. May God be blessed. Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people. In life... Genuine repentance should be reflected in kindness, generosity, and honesty. We pray for the church that it will welcome the world's people into loving relationships with Jesus through baptism. God of grace, hear our prayer. May the light of Christ shine brightly on the world's inhabitants, especially on its rulers. May justice and tolerance be practiced. God of grace, Hear our prayer. 
In this new year, help us to encourage others to follow along the path of your unending love. May they be consumed with the Holy Spirit to commit to baptism. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for the gift of salvation in our lives. May we reflect your glory by offering gifts of food, employment, and housing to the poor. God of grace, hear our prayer. Help us to ease the pain of those stricken with loss as a result of natural disasters. Through us, may they come to realize that you are with them through such calamities. God of grace, hear our prayer. Be with the newly born and their parents. May they bond with each other and grow in love to glorify you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Give strength to all physicians, nurses, and emergency workers as they try to restore your people from the harmful effects of COVID-19. Help us also to take care of ourselves. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal the sick and guide the dying into, your, into eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. We also offer our prayers for three Georges. We also pray for those people who are traveling today. We pray for Frank. We pray for all those who have experienced loss or feel loss. That they may see the light of Christ and they may see that through us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, keep us in your love, preserve our community, and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we seek to remove the chaff from our lives, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, 
out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. have the bulletin please pray along and if not we're going to offer our prayer our active reception that is we don't necessarily have the ability to receive communion physically we still are indeed the body of christ and through the grace of the holy spirit we are fed and nourished in a very spiritual but a very real way <clears throat> in union blessed jesus with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given to us. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever.
The only announcement that uh, I'm aware of at this point is just to remind you that on the 30th of January, the last Sunday of this month, we will have our annual meeting shortly after the 10 o'clock service, approximately 11 o'clock. And there will be the opportunity to be here physically, weather permitting, of course, and certainly for people to join us. Um, we're working on that as far as uh, joining us electronically uh, so that all may participate. And I invite you to do so. There'll be some information sent to you prior to that. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.